Good morning, and welcome to a very, very snowy edition of Oliver's Greenhouse. Now, some of you who, for some reason, may be interested in English weather, or those of you who are already here, last night we were hit by Storm Emma, which coincided with a massive low pressure area, which was being referred to as the beast from the east. I think it's a little bit over, over inflated terminology, really, but basically we had some very unseasonable and heavy snow this morning. It is everywhere in the front garden where it's drifted, it's up to sort of nine inches, 10 inches of snow there. So, and the greenhouse has uh, got a nice hat of slowly melting snow. So it's quite a good indicator of how insulated uh, the greenhouse is. This certainly wouldn't have stayed up on there last year when we only had the uh, really thin um, insulation, there's no way. And it is slowly melting now because it's, well, it's minus one out here at the moment and inside the greenhouse, it's a balmy, 16 degrees centigrade so what i thought i'd do is we're going to have a look inside now i've got to get some of this snow off the roof because i've got hard, i'm sure i'm going to have hardly any light inside there okay let's head on inside the greenhouse now i checked this last night when it was snowing really really hard i don't have any major concerns this thing is i spent a lot of money on this because i know it's been built well, primarily for uh, the north of england and also, funnily enough, the Russian market as well, because it's so well made, it can withstand all the, uh, all the immense snow they get. So let's uh, head on inside past the bubble wrap. Okay, here we are inside the greenhouse. It's got that really weird, eerie light, because obviously we've got quite a layer of snow. Um, certainly it's drifted heavier on this side of the ground because the wind tends to come in this way. And we've got that big slump of snow on that side where it's sort of slowly melting off the roof and ending up in the gutters over there. And it makes everything a really unusual color. It's sort of like, um, it makes everything gray. It's like it bleaches the light out of everything. So um, obviously my first big job this morning is gonna be getting all that snow off the roof. I'm just gonna get a broom and just basically just brush it off, get it out of the way. I mean, the greenhouse is still absolutely solid. Although it doesn't seem to be quite as much flex. You can, I can feel that it's got some weight on it. So that's going to be one of my jobs today. Um, let's have a quick look at some of the plants because they're going a really unusual colour. Uh, well, they're not really going an unusual colour. They are an unusual colour. Everything's slightly eerie. So we can go and have a look around because uh, things were warming up for a while as well. It was looking quite positive. I was thinking, crikey, here we go. It's spring. I mean, technically, yesterday was the first meteorological day of spring. And we've had, well, here in... Here in uh, here in the UK, I've had over nine inches of snow some places. The front drives, like the drifts are so deep, it's like absolutely ridiculous. It's like up the walls and stuff. So, uh, and it's also trying to climb in the front door of the house as well. So let's have a quick look at some of the plants. Okay, so we've got Paphio Pidulum, Jersey Freckles, which is still in flower. I don't know why this guy's still in flower. It's just like never ending bloom, that one. Obviously over the back there, if we zoom in as well, my Restrepia is putting up some uh, putting up some flowers there's a couple in the front and there's one just forming out of focus out the back there the scaphocephalum are uh, showing great guns at the moment loads of blooms these guys just flower forever there's a uh, microdactylum over the back you might not be able to see it might not come into focus over here um, and also um, is that Marinoi? Marinoi, yeah, he's in flower constantly, which we've fully zoomed in. He's over the back there. Uh, Scaphocephalum rapax, which is this bloom which is bouncing around in front of us. Okay, so these are my poroglossums. These are some I got from Equigenera. Uh, I've put an order in again for this year. They're, they're coming to the RHS Orchid Show. Uh, and there's a couple of flower spikes. There's one there, and there's one just underneath. So that's poroglossum shramii. First time bloomer for me. It's not in flower yet, but you can uh, bet your bottom dollar I'll be uh, doing a video when it is. There are those two flower spikes just in, uh, just in front there. This other poroglossum over here, this is amethystanium. This hasn't bloomed yet, but I'm hoping it's going to, you know, get its act together and do something. The two, two new scaphocephalus, or new ish scaphocephalus, I don't know what this white mark is on here. It's unusual. Um, just on that leaf there. Uh, I've got some flower spikes on here for the first time. Uh, and on this guy, so both of these scaphocephalins are going to be first time bloomers for me, which is really, really awesome. That's Lepanthes caladictian. That was growing in one of the glass, in one of the plastic orbs. You can actually see the plastic orb below, it needs a good clean. 
Um, it's so humid in here now, I've actually just been acclimatizing it slowly, and now I just grow it outside the orb, and to be honest, it seems to have put on a bit more growth since I've done that, and it's got various blooms on it. Um, it just doesn't need the humidity in here at the moment, over winter, in summer it'll go back in because the, the, the overall, the relative humidity drops to by you know, a significant amount because it's just that much hotter, that much drier. Um, but in the winter, we pan around here and have a look at what's going on on what I like to call the control wall. So there's my thermostat, it's 15 degrees centigrade in here. And if we have a look at the mist king, misting system, it's, it's reading 80.6 degrees relative humidity and 14.8, so it shows this is probably slightly more accurate than this, but it shows a disparity between the two. So I'm trying to keep it 14, 15 degrees, and then relying on solar gain to basically heat the greenhouse up the rest of the way uh, during the day. Okay, so these were the Cephalotus Hummers Giant leaf pullings that I was sent by Mark Anderson, and we're gonna be getting our first pictures on these guys quite soon. So I potted them up. See the fuzzy nubbin in the center of the shot? just in there. It's going to be the first picture on these guys for me uh, and a couple of the others as well have started to produce little growths. All the growths are starting to mature, we're starting to get some more leaves. They're really taking off so apart from that guy which is doing that weird I'm just in stasis thing uh, and here are some of my uh, some of my original leaf puddings that need repotting because there is moss in there, lots of moss so they're yeah, starting to get some decent sized pictures on them now. Over the back with horrible backlighting are the Drosera capensis that had the aphid infestation which are coming on leaps and bound recovering from their maltreatment. In front of us is the uh, small Drosera hamiltonii over the back that repotted. Uh, Drosera prolifera which also had aphids, this guy here, he's coming back leaps and bounds. Uh, Dan this is your cunifolia if you watch this, Dan, Dan Evans. This was the cunifolia that also got aphids and it looks flipping amazing again. So very dewy, very happy. No illness, badness, mankiness. So that looks really, really good. So, and also interestingly enough, the Drosera Hamiltonii, which also had aphids and we repotted, is producing a flower spike. And the, this plant has amazing flowers. Like they're, they're big, they're beautiful. If I can find one, I'll put a picture in the video about now. So I'm looking forward to that, never bloomed one before, so very happy. And more importantly, no more aphids. And here are Mark Anderson's um, Orchidoidae uh, utricularias that he sent over. Uh, that one is, oh, I can't remember, Asplundii. Not many cents over here. Here's Alpina, I think this is Alpina, I have to zoom out. This thing's growing like a monster. There we go. I'm sure it's Alpina. Yes, it is. This thing's got pretty big, lots of new growth on it. And also something that looks like a flower spike, although I've never flowered one of these, so I wouldn't really know what one looks like if I can find it. Where is it? So there we go. Okay, Mark, so you can tell me if that's a flower spike or not. I can't tell. It doesn't look like a leaf. It's not flat. It's got sort of a round torpedo shaped end. I'm assuming it's a flower spike, but uh, if you can confirm that, that'd be appreciated. Here are some nice sized pictures on uh, Nepenthes fusca. These are getting really lovely now. They're beautiful, lovely markings, very flared peristome at the top up here as well. Uh, a stunning plant really. That was uh, one of my first, first Nepenthes and it seems, turns out like an absolute beauty. Very nice. Some more view than Nepenthes, some of the Restrepias over the back. Nepenthes to biker. Nepenthes jacqueliniae is having a funny moment. It's decided to uh, exert all of its energy into growing. Some of these leaves are getting quite big now. Uh, but all the pictures at the bottom here have just, just died, basically. Um, they're, just not, they're just not doing anything, basically. Which is a shame. Over the back here, we've got uh, my two Nepenthes loei. They sit just there with all the moss growing in them. And these guys have done lots of growing this year. There's been some decent sized leaf jumps. You can pick this guy up without hurting anything. Ugh. 
and dark in the greenhouse with that snow. So this is Nepenthes lowei in the darkness with some sort of, I don't know, not quite. The nice big leaf jumps though. They've got these sort of like heart-shaped furry leaves like this. And uh, it's obviously there's been a noticeable increase in growth this year so far, which is great. Absolutely great news. There's another low eye over this side. We've just got a picture which is about to open and another one over the back there as well. I love those plants. And there's Jam Ban is tucked away over there behind the Alpina. Spectabilis is just down in front of us with the slight purple hue. Uh, and this one is, oh, I can't remember, but I've got given it. Oh, yes, this is my Truncata as well, but it's being inundated with uh, uh, Drossa and Multifida there. That big Utricularia um, reniformis leaf came right in the end. Look at the size of that bad boy, it's flipping massive. So up in front, that's the uh, Utricularia reniformis. Uh, in, well, just a nice big fat leaf on it. If I zoom out, loads of, this is my hanging multi-feeder. It's kind of in front of loads of new growth on this guy. Over the back, we've got the, um, oh, what are they, the Heliamphoras. With some nice new pictures. I'll try and move this guy out of the way without do it, breaking anything. Yep, that wasn't too bad. So yeah, so there are the Heliamphoras. Uh, we've got Pulcella. Uh, Pulcella and Folliculata there. Even the little tiny, like cutting one that I was given, is still doing okay. This is Newton's, I think it's Newton's. No, Uncinata this is. And hopefully it's gonna zoom in in this terrible light. But you can see it there, very tiny, very pretty little plant. But lots of new pictures on it, which is cool. So it means I must be doing something all right with that guy. Loads of Utricularia blooms, weeds, whatever you want to call them coming up. And then some of the kind of plants which are slowly moving out of the greenhouse, but more on that at another time. Okay, so I was going to use a broom for this, but it's somewhere in the snow. I have no idea where it is, so. A few tips of advice for running the greenhouse. If you uh, think your greenhouse might not be up to uh, the weight of all the snow, it's probably a good idea to go out intermittently and clear the roof just to take some of the weight off because the weight does build up very quickly. And what it could do is cause your frame, or the frame of the greenhouse, or maybe even some of the panels to fail. So I think that would be a good idea. Another thing that I've done in the greenhouse is I've turned off all the fans. I did this for a reason. What I did was, I did a little experiment. So one of the nights, I left the fans off. I left the fans on, basically, and I counted how many times I, it appeared, or how often, it appeared that the um, fan heater was running. And then the next night, what I did was, I left the fans off. And I found that, that obviously, as the air is cir being circulated by the oscillating fans, it, um, it moves around a lot, it loses its heat a lot quicker. But by turning the fans off, I found that, yes, the air was more stagnant, it's not moving around as much, but the heater seemed to come on a lot less. So there's a good tip for you there. I'll be doing that in future. One good thing about the snow is it does act as an excellent insulator. So what you might find is it actually helps to keep some of the heat in the greenhouse. Although you do lose obviously a lot of light transmission because this stuff is dense. Okay, so that's pretty much it for now. It's just a quick ramble through a very snowy garden this morning here in snowy England. The south of England got absolutely walloped last night and there's snow everywhere. I live on a hill and it was amazing how many people still try to drive up a slope like that in snow that was like eight to nine inches deep. There was cars bouncing off curbs, being deserted. The whole 
whole of the front road is just basically abandoned cars all the way up the hill. So it was quite interesting. It does I didn't bother going to work yesterday because I knew this weather was coming, so I stayed at home. And I've got much more report writing to do today, so that's what I'm going to go and get on now. Have a bit of breakfast, get some report writing done. And it was basically just a quick look around the greenhouse, quick chat. It ended up being an unplanned look at some of the plants which are growing in this weird light. It's a lot brighter in here now. I've broken the crust, got rid of most of the snow off the roof. And the rest of it will melt off in due course. We're expecting some rain tomorrow. I think things are going to heat up. So uh, hopefully that will wash all that away. And um, we can get back to having some springtime. So thanks again for joining me on this little quick excursion out into the snowy back garden. And uh, make sure you tune in again because I've got some big, big news coming up soon. Big news. And I think you guys are going to be both shocked and excited at the same time. So stay tuned. I'll see you all soon. Bye bye.